team news? Any updates off the back of the, the game on Wednesday? Mm, no new injuries from Wednesday. Geo is still not available. No, not not even close. And and, and Gareth. We have a training session in in the afternoon to see if uh, if he's ready or not. How is he? Uh, because there seems to be some confusion about him in posting a photograph on Instagram saying training went well, but telling the medical staff he, he wanted to stay with them and not be in the, the squad for Everton. Well, I hope that the press conference is about the game and not about individuals. But I have to admit that um, his post was uh, create a need of being addressed because uh, was a contradiction between the post and the reality. And uh, since the beginning of the season, in relation to everything, I try to be. I try to be very, very private and try to keep uh, everything in indoors. But I felt that I needed to address uh, the situation. You know, uh, probably the post was not even his responsibility. I don't know, uh, but the post was was showing that training session great uh, so I'm I'm ready and was totally was totally wrong so I when I was questioned I had to say the reality of the things which I repeat for the last time and I hope that there are no more questions about it because the situation was exactly the way I the way I told um, he was not feeling good. He asked for a scan. He had the scan. The scan didn't show an injury, but his feelings were uh, still there. And coaches and sports science and medical people, we can never go against the feelings because the players' feelings are much more important than, than all of us. So he was not ready for the game, uh, and is as simple as that. If um, he's ready for uh, for tomorrow, he is selected for tomorrow. Obviously, a, a long, emotional, physically hard game finished very late on Wednesday. Not ideal preparation to go to the the leaders. Yes, but uh, I have to try. I have to try to to forget it and try to help my players to uh, to forget. Um, yesterday, I when I opened the file of the of the Everton game data, I open and in two seconds I close it immediately <laughs> because I didn't want to go through it and I don't want even to share that with with my players um, 120 minutes playing of course at a high intensity chasing results playing uh, very fast and intense football of course was very very hard um, of course City had uh, a different game of course, they have a different squad. They managed to to rest the majority of the players because the result was um, was quite comfortable. They could even rest the players during the game and make uh, I don't know if four or five changes with players that played the previous Premier League match. But I'm not going to speak about this with. With my players is uh, is last saying a last match of this uh, very difficult week, and then 
And then finally the players they can have a day off on Sunday and then we have only Austria on Thursday which give us a little bit of the rest that the boys need but uh, today that's not a, a conversation between me and them. Uh, today is just trying to rest and to recover the better we can to be tomorrow at the best level that we can. Hello. Jose, Man City are on an incredible run, 14 straight victories. Would you go as far as saying it's one of the toughest challenges in world football to try and stop them and beat them tomorrow? They are a very good team. They are a very, very good team with a fantastic uh, run of, of results, no doubts. No doubts about that. It's always difficult to play against Man City. That's no no doubts. There is nothing new about it. They are probably now the biggest candidate to to win the title, which uh, is not is not a big a big surprise. In terms of your own relationship with Pep Guardiola, how has it evolved now? You're no longer direct rivals like you were in Spain or when you were both managers of Manchester clubs? You know, it's, the problem with us coaches is that it's not easy to develop uh, or to cultivate uh, friendships or to develop relations because we don't see each other, you know. We see each other before game two minutes and after game other two minutes and uh, it's difficult. Uh, but with Pep, I keep uh, I keep the three years where uh, we worked together. We saw each other every day. We celebrate together the titles that we we won. We we didn't cry, but we were disappointed together when we lost something important. Great periods of our lives. Him as a player and myself as a young uh, assistant. And that's what, of course, I, I keep. After that, I can have only good feelings with him. I don't have any bad feeling. Uh, football matches, football problems, if you want to call them for me. I'm, I'm from the generation where uh, what happens in, in a football match stays in a football match. And uh, I have only positive feelings and uh, good respect. Um, there are moments in life where uh, we don't forget things. Uh, one of the things I, I don't forget was uh, when my my father died. Uh, he knew how important my dad was to me, so he had a call. Um, by the way, today would be my dad's birthday. It would be 83 today. And of course, when his mom died, I, I reply the same way. So there are things that people don't see. We don't need, we don't need to share. I'm sharing because I have now the opportunity, but I only have good memories of him when we were together. Just finally for me, Jose, Eric Dars missed the last two matches. You suggested that he's maybe struggling with confidence at the moment. What are you doing to try and get him back to the levels which he's shown already this season? You know, first of all, let me tell you, um, because sometimes people can have different uh, perceptions of, of things. And um, if I'm not wrong on my stats, since the beginning of the season, Eric started 20 matches. Um, Aldo White started 19 matches and Davidson Sanchez started 17 matches. Um, so equal opportunities for, uh, uh, for everybody. Um, and that's it. And uh, football players, they always want to play. Um, and sometimes they cannot always play, but in this in this case, um, of course, young young Joe Rodden is in a different process than the others. But the others they had equal opportunities. Uh, we did many times 
Eric and Toby, we did many times Eric and Davison, we did many times Toby and and Davison. So opportunities there for everybody. They play basically the the same number of uh, of matches, and um, and that's it. But um, Eric, as I was saying, is is one of the guys that I I really like. You know, Eric is uh, is always Eric. If he's playing, if he's not playing, difficult moments, easier moments. Um, the most difficult one was when I substitute him against uh, Olympiacos minute 25 or 30 or something like that. Since that moment I understood that the guy was was a team player, uh, was a guy that uh, is not selfish, was the guy that is not thinking about him and thinking about the team, accepted that situation uh, like a professional. and. Um, I trust him. I trust Harry, uh, Eric. I like uh, and I like the feeling of of trusting a player. Um, a player makes a mistake, makes a mistake, but is a player that I trust. That you played uh, back in November, Manchester City. That that you beat. How different do you see this Manchester City having them gone on this massive uh, run of fifteen games unbeaten? You know, we beat them because we played so, 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 so well in that match. And uh, that's the only way any team can beat Man City. You have to play very, 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 very well. You know, you make a, you make a defensive mistake and, and, and they kill you. Uh, you are not very effective in the chances that you create. You don't create many. And you know, you just look to the you just look to the pragmatism of the numbers and what is Man City in this moment? Is a team that win matches, is a team that scores goals, and is a team that doesn't concede goals. So when you play against a team with these very very clear uh, pragmatic uh, numbers, you know that is very difficult to stop them to score because they score all the time and you know that it's very difficult to score goals because they they don't concede so you have to play a perfect a perfect match like we did when we played them here at home we played a perfect match and of course their level of uh, of confidence was was not the same i think uh, results they bring the best out of of the players and uh, you can feel in this moment that they are a team playing at a very high level on the style of of the game can can you repeat i didn't understand you very well so i i know you are unhappy with the defending against, against everton but but what will you need to do defensively on saturday and will that therefore have an effect on the on the style of the game will you not be able to play as attacking as you did against Everton, against a side like Manchester City? I'm not speaking about the style. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about what a football match is. And uh, a football match sometimes is different than, than what you think it is. And what makes that difference in terms of, of perception uh, normally are the goals. The goals that you score the goals that you miss, the goals that you concede, or the goals that you don't concede. You know, I, I could go with you through uh, the Everton game and analyze with you the nature of, uh, of the goals that we, that we concede, but that's not for me to do with you. That's for me to do with, um, with the players. Uh, which uh, I always do. So, if you want to analyze, you have to do by by yourself. You have to go with Carragher, Neville on on the Monday nights, and or Rio and 
the other guys on on BT or uh, Shira and Janus and Lineker on BBC. That's that's their job, and I believe that they do their job very very well. My that's not my job. My job is to do that with my players, which I do, which I do all the time. And uh, of course, Everton has very very good attacking players that they can hurt you when you make uh, mistakes and Man City has lots of very very good players from midfield to attacking positions that can hurt you if you make mistakes that's why I said if we beat them at home to nil in the first uh, match of uh, the first part of the season was because uh, defensively we were very good I just want to ask you quickly about uh, Eric Lamella. I, I get the impression he's a player that has a lot of the attributes you look for in players. Um, this week he's had two very positive games, um, but obviously over his Tottenham career, let's say he's, he's had a lot of problems, injury issues. Are we getting to see maybe the best version of Eric Lamella right now? I think you touch you touch a point, and I, I just want to confirm. A good Lamella, I love. You are right. He's the kind of player that I that I like very much. Um, and the first thing I like on him is that he wants to play. He wants to assume responsibilities. He never hides. He wants the ball. Uh, he's a little bit sometimes chaotic, uh, but he's a positive reason to be a little bit chaotic, which is, I want to play, I want the ball. If the ball is not arriving to me, I have to arrive to the ball. Uh, and uh, I love I love Coco. Of course, when I arrived, his, his history of injuries was incredible negative, was very, 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 very hard. Um, that's touch wood. Uh, in this moment, he's, he's fit. Uh, but of course, a player with his history, he played uh, 90 minutes against. Uh, did he play 90 minutes against West Brom? I think so. If he didn't, was I think he did, and um, even more now. So let's see. Um, but honestly, I'm I'm going to ask him: Can you play again from the start? Because if he feels he can, of course I play him. Are they in a position to start for a group of them? Yeah, I, I believe so. Of course, he played 60 minutes or so, um, which he didn't want, and I didn't want to, but was the game that pushed us in, in that direction. But no, no negative feelings after after the game, just the normal, the normal stiffness, if is the right word. Sometimes I don't say the right words, uh, but I believe so. I believe we can start. Serge Aurier. Huh? Ah, Serge. I'm waiting for this afternoon. Is another one that I'm waiting for this afternoon a session. Uh, he was injured. He was injured against West Bromish, and he couldn't play against Everton. I don't know if he can, if he can tomorrow. I would like to ask you: uh, Do you see any weak point in Manchester City game? If there is any, for them, yes, Manchester City uh, game. If you see any weakest point in their in their game, if there is any nowadays, <laughs> no. It's a team that wins every match, scores lots of goals. They don't concede. I think they conceded three in so many in so many matches, and one one of the three, I think it was it was a penalty. I don't see any weakness. That's why I was saying that to win the game, we need to be perfect in every aspect and in every minute because they are really a very very strong team.